So with the news of Julio Jones joining the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it signals yet another elite wide receiver who, yes, even though Julio Jones at this point in his career is not the all-pro Atlanta Falcon Julio Jones that we knew that was basically leading that offense to a Super Bowl appearance a few years ago. He's not that guy. However, you put him in an offense with Mike Evans, with... Chris Godwin once he comes back, and with Tom Brady. I really think we're going to see a season out of Julio Jones not quite to the level of what Randy Moss was like when he went to New England with Tom Brady for a couple of years, but we're probably going to see a very good season out of Julio Jones in this upcoming season. Now, the other side of this token, even though Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their front office has done pretty much everything possible to make Tom Brady's career last long in the NFL and make his championship window with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last as long as possible. Another team in the NFC who has been a contender even without doing the exact same thing for their Hall of Fame caliber quarterback Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers have let yet another star wide receiver go to another contender. And look, I'm never for the just get any player just to get them, but I will admit that I think a smart part of being a front office guy is sometimes you want to get a star player so another team who already is loaded can't just load up on more star players. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers didn't need Julio Jones, but there's a lot of other teams around the NFL, like the Green Bay Packers, that could have really used Julio Jones and just having him on his on that roster instead of having him on another contender already provides more value to the Packers than it does at this moment. So let's go ahead and talk about the draft for the Green Bay Packers in the last 16 years going from 06 to 22 after Aaron Rodgers was drafted in two, or, uh, yeah, 2005. I don't know why I almost said 2015. But you look at the names and the sheer number when you compare the amount of wide receivers Green Bay has drafted to the rest of the NFL. Green Bay has drafted 21 wide receivers since 06. Uh, Some of the names include James Jones, Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams, Ty Montgomery, who actually transitioned to a running back, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Equinemius St. Brown, Amari Rodgers. Amari Rodgers has been the only wide receiver drafted since 2019 for the Green Bay Packers. There have been 521 other wide receivers that have been drafted since that 06 mark that I just mentioned. And just to keep this short, I'm going to list a few names who have gone within 10 picks after whatever first round pick the Green Bay Packers have made. T. Higgins, Debo Samuel, DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, Juju Smith-Schuster, Cooper Cup, and Kenny Galladay. Just within the last five years... All seven of those names that I just gave you all went 10 picks or less after Green Bay made their first round selections in the NFL draft or second round selections as well within their respective drafts. And this isn't even talking about the free agency ineptitude that this team has shown over not just the last few years, but pretty much the entire career of Aaron Rodgers. Even just look within the last few years, you've had names like Robbie Anderson, Kenny Galladay. A lot of really talented guys in the NFL sign contracts that honestly are not that too terrible to match. I mean, you're looking around the NFL, even just this year. I mean, the Green Bay Packers couldn't give $3 million to Jarvis Landry. They couldn't give they couldn't give $3.2 million to Juju Smith-Schuster. They couldn't give $2 million to Jamison Crowder. The only thing that they could do was give $1.85 million to Sammy Watkins. That's the only money that they had to spend on a wide receiver. Remember, they even though they drafted three wide receivers this year, are we really sure that their number one receiver, I can't even remember his name off the top of my head at this moment. That's how unsure I think a lot of people probably are about this wide receiver group going into this year. I apologize to Christian Watson, and I apologize for seeming like an idiot when I forget his name, but I mean, that's just kind of where we are with the Green Bay Packers, is if you're a wide receiver taken by this team, 
it's more than likely that you are not going to end up being anything great. And actually, that's not even a true statement. That's actually not even a true statement. Because a lot of the wide receivers that the Green Bay Packers have taken, almost half of them have ended up being pro bowlers. James Jones, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, Devontae Adams. Um, you know, they have a decent track record of the wide receivers that they do take. It's just they don't take them. And they don't sign them. They don't trade for them. Marquise Brown got traded this year. Wasn't to Green Bay. And it's not like the Green Bay Packers can't say that they have a good quarterback. They have a quarterback where they easily could say a lot of wide receivers would love to play with Aaron Rodgers. A lot of tight ends. A lot of players would love to play for Aaron Rodgers. And unfortunately for Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be another year where it's all put on his shoulders. And I think on some aspect, he does like that. But on another aspect, he understands, like, when it gets late in this year and the other only guy that we have to rely on is A.J. Dillon to run the ball after we just traded probably the best receiver in the NFL and Devontae Adams to another team, it's a really good chance Green Bay might not even make the playoffs this year. And it's a really good chance that Green Bay is forced to trade Aaron Rodgers after this year if they don't end up having to do it during the season. 